God, God damn it. Some cocktails are perfect and some cocktails are actually perfect. And typically that comes after some deliberation, which is the exact idea behind today's cocktail, a variation of the last word called the paper plane on today's episode of Mike's Hard Reviews. Hi there, my name is Michael. I'm a bartender from Kalamazoo, Michigan. And today we're talking about the 2008 variation on a last word called a paper plane. And yes, hopefully that makes the joke at the beginning of this video that I have to do an editing and I'm probably gonna regret doing. Um, makes some sense. <laughs> so a paper plane is a variation on the last word invented by bartender Sam Ross, who's a Chicago area bartender who made the cocktail up for the opening menu of the Violet Hour, which is a cocktail spot owned by uh, Toby Maloney, I believe. They're still open to this day. They survived COVID, thank God. A lot of other places unfortunately didn't. Uh, but what that means is that you can still enjoy this drink in its classic environment and, and stylization and oh man, <laughs> Are you gonna fucking love it? But last week we talked about what a last word is, and part of it was a discussion on the notion that a last word is not just a specific cocktail, but is also a way to create cocktails, and that is what the paper plane is. It takes the idea that a last word is an equal parts sour featuring two liqueurs, a base spirit, and a citrus, and the, 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 the combines that notion with different ingredients to come up with something new. Sam Ross took the entire idea of a last word, flipped it on its head, but kept the idea the same, and has created a cocktail that I think perfectly encapsulates exactly what the original last word was capable of doing, a very robust and full and rounded and fascinating and intentional, just richness of flavor and perfect execution, while also making what I think is an inherently more interesting and inherently better tasting cocktail than the original last word. The difference between a last word and a paper plane is everything. Um, while the methodology and the proportions stay the same, almost everything else is swapped out. So you're gonna be doing bourbon instead of gin, uh, Amaro no Nino, which we'll talk about in a second here, uh, instead of uh, green chartreuse, uh, Aperol, which is a bitter Italian liqueur uh, instead of maraschino, and then lemon juice instead of lime. And when you think about that flavor composition, if you know what all those things are like, it makes complete sense. It's accomplishing a very, very similar thing, a whole, a whole collection of four flavors that play together beautifully, you know, between each one of them on their own, and then come together to create something even more, more fascinating. There's not much more to say. Like I said, the cocktail was made in 2008. It's still available at the Violet Hour, which is still open in Chicago. And honestly, I don't want to keep fucking talking. I just want to have a paper plane. So let's go ahead and make the paper plane. Okay, as excited as I am, I need to pull myself back a little bit because I skipped a couple of things and we do need to talk a little bit more about the cocktail itself. The paper plane uh, is an equal parts cocktail as a last word variation made by Sam Ross and it gets its name in particular from the MIA song Paper Plane, which in 2000 eight was insanely popular at the time and the name and recipe stuck and now it is essentially as close to a classic cocktail in terms of fame as any modern cocktail has ever gotten. I can think of very few if really any other cocktails from the modern era that have achieved as much distinction as the paper plane has. Truthfully this is a powerhouse cocktail that can appeal to just about anybody and is one of the most finely tuned combinations of ingredients, much like the last word that I've ever experienced in my entire life. Not only that, it is also open to deliberation, much like a last word is. So we will talk about a variation on this that you can make at home because some of these ingredients aren't the easiest or cheapest to find. So a last word was gin, maraschino, green chartreuse, and lime juice. Uh, all in equal parts. A paper plane is bourbon Amaro no Nino, which is uh, an Amaro, it's an Italian bitter liqueur. Um, Aperol, which is a, a different kind of bitter Italian liqueur. Uh, and then lime, uh, lemon juice, excuse me. We've got two liqueurs in here. Both of them are bitter herbal liqueurs. Uh, they're different from each other though. Aperol is a bitter orange liqueur. It is an aperitif, it is lower proof, it is sweeter, and it tastes a lot like candied oranges. Amaro no Nino is an herbal, dark, rich, sort of spice adjacent kind of liqueur that I would argue tastes a lot like almond and uh, maybe maybe fennel. I mean, honestly, it 
it's it's kind of a thing of its own. It's difficult to describe. Rich dark dark chocolate notes and maybe some coffee in there. Uh, you know, I get sort of a rum character out of it in a couple different ways. Um, so yeah, like a burnt sugar note. This is phenomenal stuff. You could drink this straight off the rocks and be happy. In fact, I have, and it's really, really good. The problem is, um, this stuff is, in, at least in my area, uh, $57.89 a bottle. <laughs> it is incredibly, incredibly expensive. And it will last you a while, especially if you're using it to make paper planes because you're only using one ounce at a time, but eventually that will catch up to you, so what do you do? Honestly, if you wanted to find something alternative to this, there are cheaper, similar, but not the same Italian bitter Amaros that you can use. Averna is the one that I saw that seemed to have the most similar flavor palette to Amaro no Nino, but it is still not the same thing. And I would actually say, maybe just bite the bullet and buy the no Nino. If not that, I would actually say, go ahead and use Amaretto, of all things. <laughs> Amaretto is a sweet almond flavored liqueur from Italy. Uh, and it's actually not an original idea of mine to substitute this for that, even though I did, did make note that this does taste significantly like almond. It has an almondy char characteristic to it. No, that idea actually comes from how the folks over at Dabney & Co here in Kalamazoo make a paper plane, substituting the Amaro for Amaretto, because they do have a very similar character and on top of that, Amaretto is a little sweeter, so it can be a little bit more to your palate if you are not super into the really strong, herbal, rich, dark chocolate kind of flavors. So yeah, you could do that, or honestly, just buy the No Nino. You're not gonna regret it. It is a beautiful bottle. It is a beautiful taste. And now we get to make a cocktail and put it into our paper plane. So we're gonna make a paper plane. I'm gonna go ahead and start that off with one ounce of bourbon. In this particular case, I am using Elijah Craig uh, straight bourbon whiskey, I believe. Yep, Kentucky straight bourbon. I love this stuff. It's a beautiful, robust, yet very familiar bourbon. I think it works really well. Next up, we're gonna need an ounce of our Amaro No Nino. Smells like heaven in a bottle. Do note that if you buy one, you will have a hard time getting that cork out for the first time. For whatever reason, these things are sealed really, really well. Next up, we're gonna need one ounce of April, our bitter orange liqueur. Funnily enough, also from Italy, but not remotely the same as our No Nino. And finally, we need an ounce of lemon juice. And I just happen to have half a lemon at the ready here. Please have a full ounce in here. Fuck me. Every time I get so close to making one of these videos without having any issues arise, I am immediately shut down. Usually it's by the citrus. One ounce of lemon juice thrown in there. And then that's all. We just need to add some ice to shake, chill, and dilute. We're gonna stick with our traditional ethos for shaking cocktails, one cube whole, and then one cube cracking little bits. Um, I, so far, I haven't encountered a cocktail that actually says to shake the cocktail a certain way, you know, using a different kind of ice or a different method. So this is pretty universal and you should do it at home because it makes the most standardizable cocktails. We're gonna cap that up, tap it down, and shake for 12 to 15 seconds to chill and dilute. Much like the last word, it is served up in a cocktail coupe, which I'm going to double strain into to catch any ice chips or pulp. Now, technically speaking, a paper plane has a very, very specific garnish. It is actually garnished with a literal paper plane. They make very small origami planes that they attach to the rim of the cup, or rather the glass, with um, one of those cute little wooden clothespins. I lack both the origami paper, the skill, time, uh, well, the everything to do that. But frankly, the drink doesn't need it. It is very entirely itself just in the glass. So that we can serve forth as our paper plane. So with our station cleaned up ever so slightly, let's go ahead and give our paper plane a sip. Salute. My God. And that is just... Ah. Oh. <laughs> For me, the real difference between a paper plane and a last word is the direction that it goes. Despite it being, you know, very, having a lot of liqueur in it and some very sharp herbal flavors and that kind of very specific character that Maraschino has, the last word remains light. And that is good. But I think to an objective extent, the paper plane accomplishes that in 
the opposite direction. It is a much heavier drink. It feels more impactful on your palate. You get the sort of oaky vanilla flavor of the bourbon up front, followed by the rich herbs of the Amaro and, and that, that orange citrus from the April coming in, followed by both of their bitternesses. And that lemon juice is there, holding these things up and, and keeping them reading as bright so they're not overbearing, but still allowing them to be them, their full selves, I suppose. I did try both the Ginepi and the Maraschino like individually when I was testing and making these cocktails for the first time before filming the show. And when I was doing the last word, I was thinking, man, these things are actually kind of heavy. These are really heavy cocktails, like heavy liqueurs. You couldn't really put these over the rocks and enjoy them. They're definitely modifiers. Here, I think everything that's gone into this is something that you can essentially ingest on its own. You wouldn't really do that with lemon juice, but I suppose you could. The combination of ingredients in, in this direction is, is chocolatey and herbal and rich and, and smooth and, and just so fucking delicious. It's hard to pick between it and the last word as a favorite. That same sort of pungent, robust, enjoyable character that exists in both, but the sum of the parts that happens here I think is not a perfect cocktail, but the perfect cocktail. The total collection of the ingredients is just screaming at you in, in this really pleasant way, that is to say, that it's there and it's 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 effortful and, and, and deserves to exist. I don't know. I'm actually at a loss for words. I don't know how to describe it. It's it's that good to me. What's really nice too is that front end is not just the bourbon impact. It is the orange essence of the April and the lime coming, or excuse me, lemon coming together. And it is just bright and citrusy and, and, and inviting. And then you get this nice oaky sweetness from the bourbon that comes in and it's just so pleasant on the tongue. And right when that whiskey starts to hit that point where the oak character of it becomes bitter, the April also comes back. It comes back up and is and is like, here's the full sort of orange impact of the April and the bitterness that comes with that. It sort of takes it, it knocks the bourbon out of the way and is like, oh, no, no, April now. And as this is happening, that, that, that herbal richness of the Amaro is right there, making it all interesting. It's really, really fascinating as a cocktail. It's really, really good. And it looks really, really pretty too. I mean, look at this. It's it's just, it's bright and orange and warm looking and it just, ah, it's so good. And actually I could say the same thing for the one at uh, Dabney & Co. Uh, I mentioned them before. Uh, they make uh, a paper plane using Amaretto, which I actually think does make for a more um, approachable cocktail. I would argue that this is a perfect cocktail for people who know how to break down cocktails and are there to experience their evolution and and discuss them and deliberate on them and, and embrace them. A paper play made with Amaretto instead of Amaro No Nino is I think perfectly appropriate in terms of its flavor, but removes some of the complexity for the sake of embracing a particular note that also pairs really well with everything else going on there, no doubt about that. And it makes it more approachable. Not to mention, I think it's actually kind of an interesting adjustment because Amaro No Nino, like I said, is really, really, really fucking expensive. Um, and if you were like making a bar and putting, you were like building a bar and you wanted to put it on the menu and you took one look at this bottle if here, if you were just took to, at the price of that and you were like, I'm putting one ounce of that in another cocktail, it's 57 fucking dollars. It's gonna make the cocktail like $22 after markup. It's ridiculous. Amaretto then is like a perfect substitution. And I mean like the Serrano Amaretto, not like De Kuiper Amaretto, not the same thing. You want something nice. <laughs> what I think makes a cocktail close to what the word perfect means to me is that it it kind of makes you forget what the fuck you're talking about. And not in the sense that it's intoxicating you to the point that you forget shit, but there's a, there's a sort of full body experience surrounding it that leaves you with just the sensation of becoming relaxed, having your tension be wiped away and having these flavors invite you into 
the moment and invite you into the now, what is happening now, to focus on the world around you. And that is what makes a paper plane the perfect cocktail, whereas the last word was just a perfect cocktail. Yeah, I've hit that point where I'm not drunk, but I'm, I'm firmly just enjoying myself now, and I'm gonna ramble for the rest of time if I am not shut up. So I will go ahead and shut myself up and say thank you all so much for watching this hectic, quick, probably very short, I don't know. I have a feeling this is gonna be a really short video, having filmed it on the paper plane. Sam Ross's last word variation from 2008. I wonder if all this shit was cheaper in 2008, actually. Pre or post housing crash, I wonder. That's a interesting thought. If you want to, you can follow me down below by clicking that subscribe button. I make a video uh, on this channel every single Friday, and then sometimes on Tuesday, like this video you're watching now. And even though I don't use them much, I do also have social media. Go ahead and follow me there if you want. Um, I'm going to be adding a Reddit to that as well sometime soon. Um, so eventually you'll be able to find that. But for now, just the two you're seeing on screen. Sorry. That's really all I have for you. So thanks for watching. You guys will have a great rest of your day. I am going to go probably struggle to edit a video um, because I'll be too invested in enjoying, you know, the last hours of sunshine for today and this cocktail and <sighs> catharsis. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video and remember to have a great rest of your day and drink responsibly. See you around. Bye-bye.